Hello and welcome back to another episode of the iApple Guy. This is my 2017 MacBook Air. It has a 1.8 GHz 5th Gen Intel Core i5, 8 GB of DDR3 RAM, a 128GB SSD, a not so great but also not terrible screen, oh, and it's also my main machine. While these specs might not sound incredible, I love this machine. It's the first Mac I ever bought and this little Mac has gone through a lot over the years. But now the reason why you clicked on this video, I accidentally sat on a damn screen. Don't jump into your bed while your laptop is still on it. Most people would either opt for a new machine or a new top assembly, which both cost a lot of money. I can't afford any of that, so I decided to replace the LCD panel. Not the top assembly, not even the backlight. By the way, before any of you comment, the chances of getting a third party or fake display like this are pretty small. This job is simply too complicated or time consuming for most people. Also look into buying from a trusted supplier. I want to mention that Louis Rosman actually inspired me to make this video and that I also want to support the ride to repair. Check it out for more information. To do this you'll need a couple of tools. Number one is a hot air station with a controllable temperature and air. Number two is a metal spudger or a spatula of some kind. Number three is good or rather the correct adhesive. And then number four is the correct Phillips head screwdriver and some tweezers. We first need to remove the bezel. You can both heat up the bezel and a metal tool like I did. The safer option is maybe only heating up your tool though, you don't want to damage any of the components under the bezel or the rubber trim around the edge. I heated up the bezel at around 150 degrees celsius and set the air to about 50% to loosen up the adhesive. Don't go too hot on the bezels because like I said before you don't want to destroy components under the bezel or the rubber trim. This is how you can heat up your tool though. I put the hot air station to the hottest temperature it can go, which is 500 degrees celsius and put the air all the way up. Then I just blast this little spudger until I can barely hold it anymore. You want it to be like a little burning rod. Something with a wooden handle would have come in handy though. Now you just want to slide the spudger under the bezel and cut through the adhesive. If it's hot enough it'll cut through it very nicely, almost like butter. Use more heat when you feel too much resistance. It's also very important to hold the tool as horizontal and close to the screen as possible. You don't want to bend the bezel as this aluminium will barely or rather won't bend back into shape. The only place I lifted the tool up a little was at the webcam. I'd rather bend the bezel here than screw up the webcam. I also avoid directly heating it up with the hot air station. When it's off you'll have something that looks like this, the screen and the little PCB. Now you might think that the assembly is held on with adhesive and two screws, but wait, there's more to it. First, you'll need to remove seven screws without mixing them up because some of them have a different length. Five of them are under black tape. How funny Apple. Now I'll cut these flex cables just to make life easier. I don't care about the board since you get one with a new panel anyways.
First take a look at the sticker by the way, it'll be important in just a minute. You can actually start peeling it off. Now you can also carefully look behind the board. Here you'll find two connectors that need to be disconnected. Your EDP or video cable and the backlight cable. I first disconnected the EDP cable with a pair of tweezers. Make sure to first pull this tab up before you try to remove the cable. Now be very careful with this backlight flex. It is very easy to rip and if it happens you'll have no backlight. The cable has a little bent in it. You can see how it bends in this clip. You also don't want to connect the cable up backwards slash twist it because then it won't work. It's very important that you hook it up like this. Okay, pull the little tab and then slowly pull out the cable. Now you can actually start pulling away the board, but don't remove it completely yet. The sticker I told you about earlier is trying to rip the backlight flex. Don't let it happen. Peel it off the board and pull it away when it's completely off the board and you're sure it's not sticking to anything anymore. And then it's finally time to remove the broken LCD itself. Grab it in the middle at this metal bar and lightly pull it up. You'll need a hot air station again. Don't blast it with heat. I set the temperature at around 170 degrees Celsius and the air at around 50% on my device. The goal here is getting it off in one piece. You want to watch out for the back layers of the screen under this panel. It's actually the backlight and the diffuser under this LCD panel is very sensitive. Heat up the display and slowly lift it up. Stop pulling when you feel too much resistance or when the panel is bending because it will crack and leave glass everywhere. It'll come up on its own when the adhesive starts to loosen up. Once you're able to lift it up quite a bit, remove the adhesive under the display to prevent it from sticking again when it falls down. Work your ray around the screen until you can carefully remove it. Under it is this diffuser. It might stick to the display and try to come up with it. You can very carefully touch the edge of it and pull it down to prevent it from coming up. Don't touch it, you'll see the damage it does once the screen is replaced. The only thing you can maybe do is if necessary hold it at a corner or on the edge of the sheet like I just told you. The next step is removing all of this adhesive. Don't reuse this old stuff. You wouldn't want your new panel to sit on this huge chunk of glass, right? Then use new adhesive. The new display can actually crack again if you decide to just install it on top of the old adhesive with a bunch of broken glass on it. Carefully inspect all areas where you removed adhesive and make sure the old adhesive is gone and all of the glass is gone. I used compressed air to remove dust particles from this diffuser and under it and also to just clean the whole top assembly. Again be careful to not touch the diffuser and maybe just grab it by the edge if necessary. You now need to remove this metal bar from the old panel. This little bar actually has a couple of individual LEDs at the bottom of the screen. If you don't do this you'll see a couple of bright spots at the bottom of the screen. I don't care about this old screen so I just heat up the thing at 500 degrees celsius maximum amount of air until I can cut through the adhesive and remove the bar. And here's more proof why you shouldn't reuse this old stuff. All of this old broken glass is on your adhesive. Remove all of the adhesive and broken glass from the bar. I cleaned it up a bit and now I'll put it back on the frame. Putting on the little bar is easy, just make sure you have the right 5 screws. I have two rolls of adhesive for this job. They're both TISA 61395 adhesive or 
61,395, 61395, whatever you want to call it. Um, but anyways, one is four millimeters wide and the other one is six millimeters wide. I used the four millimeter tape to attach the screen and the six millimeter tape was to attach the bezel. Now this is actually the adhesive that Apple uses on its devices and the specs of this tape are definitely good enough for this job. I'll first apply the four millimeter adhesive so I can attach this screen. This is some very fine work. I took my time for this. And now you can take your new panel and start hooking it up. I first connected the EDP or video cable again and then I can connect the backlight cable. Make sure to hook it up correctly like this and not backwards slash twist it. Close the tab to secure the cable, on both the backlight and video cable actually. Screw the board onto the frame using the two original screws that aren't covered in tape. Here's me finishing up the adhesive that holds the display in place. That piece of glass on the left side is still there because I needed it to film a clip. I actually removed it and applied new adhesive later. Now I actually turn the computer on to remove dust. I use a lot of compressed air until I can't see any more dust. Again, you can carefully grab the diffuser by the edge to blow under it. Make sure you don't accidentally blow the entire diffuser off of the frame though. Remove the first screen protector. Well, that is if your panel is new, otherwise also remove the dust from it with compressed air. And slowly line up the display. You have these little L-shaped indents in the frame that will help you see where the screen goes. Once it's aligned, push it in. I kind of pushed it onto the frame and then went along the edges of the panel with my fingers and pushed to make sure it's secure. You'll probably want to recalibrate the display by selecting color LCD or calibrate it manually since the screen might have a bluish tint when first used. I couldn't find the TISA tape in a wide enough size to cover the whole bezel so I used two or even three strips along the sides. Be sure to not cover up any of the sensors or the webcam. This job would be a huge fail if the bezel would look bad or constantly fall off in my opinion. It would just look like I did a poor job. And that's it. Now I can put on the bezel. It first needs to clean though. There's two types of adhesive on the bezel. This black stuff and this clear stuff. I like the black adhesive since it's actually the tape that we are using. This usually just comes off in one piece, like this. Nice. This clear stuff is horrible though, it'll come off in little pieces. I spent a good amount of time cleaning and this is the result. Okay, now finally, let's put on the bezel. And here you go. There's one tiny problem though. I left a spot on the diffuser when I accidentally touched it. You can't clean it. You know, this is why you really need to watch out when removing the panel or cleaning the diffuser itself. I also test everything out and 
Yep, that seems to work. Anyways, it's all fixed up. So yeah, I'm really glad how this machine turned out. Um, this outro is actually filmed a couple of months after the um, initial repair date, which was actually in August 2020. Um, right now it's March 2021 and here it is still working and yes still unfortunately my main editing machine. I know I'm not a big fan of certain things about the M1 but I still want to try it out and I need a new MacBook um, especially for the heavy 4k editing I'm doing like this MacBook Air isn't holding up you know to my standards um, I need at least I, I mean I want. <laughs> 16 gigs of RAM and an M1 chip wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I first need to work in the summer, of course. Um, but yeah, so stick around for content like that as well, I guess, because obviously I will be unboxing it and I will be filming that because why wouldn't I film that? Overall, it, I think that this has been a successful repair and I'm happy with what I have right now. And uh, yeah. All I have to say now is that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to check out all of my social media if you want to see more content like this. You can also join our Discord server. Uh, links are in the description. And then I guess I'll see you in the future.